Hey guys, and welcome back to whatever part we're on now. Um, I want to apologize for the long hiatus. Um, I really don't have too much of an excuse. Um, but without further ado, let us keep going. And let's see, last time we just set up the basic timer mechanic uh, with our action performed. So now what I think we're going to do is we're going to head on over to our ball.java class. Okay. So I'm going to show you guys how we can get our balls on the screen. And it's going to be amazing. Um, so basically, on our screen window, here, uh, I'm going to run our window so I can show you better. Okay, so basically in any game window we have a set of coordinates and using these coordinates we can specify any point on the screen and it starts with 0, 0 and 0, 0 is in the top left corner and these coordinates go left and right, and that's the x direction, and I'm sure you guys have learned about this in math class before. And up and down is the y direction, and using any combination of those two numbers, we can specify any pixel on our game panel that we want. And because, um, because our game window that we made is 500 pixels by 500 pixels. Uh, I can show you that just to remind you guys. Uh, let's see. Yep, right here. Set size 500 by 500. So we have between 0, the top left, 0, 0, 0 in the x direction. We're not moving left and right. And 0 in the y direction. We're not moving up and down. So we're at zero, 0, here. And the bottom right corner, can't really show you guys too well, but the bottom right is 500 in the x direction. So left to right, it's 500 pixels to the right and 500 pixels down. So using those coordinates, we can specify something. So if I wanted to put something, say, in the middle of the screen, I want x to be 250, so x goes over 250 pixels halfway, and y would be 250 as well, halfway down. And then that points right to the center of the screen. And we're going to use that a lot for our positioning and stuff like that, but hopefully that gives a better picture for what we're going to be doing. So, every um, game entity we have, like our ball or our player, anything in the game that moves around really, uh, we're going to want to change its position. Like all the time, like with the player, it's based on the keyboard input. With the ball, the ball just kind of bounces around the screen by itself. But we're going to, in some way or shape or form, these things are going to be moving. They're not going to be in the same spot all the time. So we're going to need to have some variables that can change. So what we're going to do is we're going to have in our ball class private, oh Jesus, private int x And let's see, private int y. So, remember about the coordinates I was talking about before? Okay, well, that's what this is. In our ball class, the x is going to keep track of where the ball is in the left and right. So, I'll show you guys again, just because this is really important to understand. So our ball is going to be moving around, and 
to draw it, we're going to use the x values and the y values we just made. So this way the ball can keep track of where it is on the screen. So, let's see here. We have private and x. So that's going to keep track of where on the screen our ball is on the left to right. So it could be at 100 in, and then next frame it could be at 110, next to 120. Or if it hits the wall, it'll start going backwards, 110, 190, 80, whatever. So that's just to keep track of that. And same thing for the Y. And as the ball moves around, we're going to be changing its X and Y. So they'll be moving all over the place. So it creates the illusion of movement. So that's what we're going to do with that. Um, okay. Now, actually, you know what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set these to an initial 250 and 250. So our ball is going to start right smack dab in the middle of the screen. Okay, so as an extension as to what I was talking about before, well you guys are just going to get sick of this, aren't you? Um, so the ball is bouncing around doing its own thing. It's keeping track of its um, keeping track of its location on the screen by itself. So, how how does the ball know how much to move each frame, each update? Remember the game loop, uh, update, uh, paint, over and over, update, paint, update, paint. Every time that does that update, paint, in that update, how does it know how many pixels to move? and in what direction. Well, we're going to have to specify that. Um, and we can do that with another variable. And maybe just to solidify this for you guys, pretty much every single game object is going to have these four variables. X velocity is how many pixels per update that we want our ball to be moving. Basically the speed of how fast we want it to be zooming around the screen. And we can probably set that to something. We can be unfair to the player. We can have the uh, ball be going to the left right off the bat. So we'll set that to negative 10. And remember, this isn't, the x velocity isn't where it is on the screen. So it's not, we're not saying that it's, um, we're not saying that it's somewhere over here off the screen because that would be what negative 10 would be in the next position. We're just saying, wherever the ball is, next update, move it backwards to the left, 10 pixels. That's where our velocity is, the change in position each frame. So we're not saying go over here and chill out, have a beer when your parents are out or whatever off the screen. We're not saying that, we're just saying from uh, from where the ball is now, it's going to be moved over 10 pixels to the left. So we'll have our 250, 250. So when our game starts, the ball is going to be smack dab in the middle of our screen. Okay, and every update, it the ball is going to look at its velocity. Oh, okay, negative 10. So the first update, the ball is going to move 10 pixels to the left. Next, and that way it will be at x240, y250. Next update, 10 more pixels to the left, 230, 250. 230 from the left, 250 from the top. Because we haven't set any y velocities yet, so it's not moving up or down. 
I hope that makes some degree of sense. Um, ideally, you're going to want these values to be random when you start. But for now, this is fine. The two semicolons are not necessary. I mean, you could do like 10, but that's just me being a complete moron. Okay, so that's the basics of that. Um, we're going to continue on with that.